It is a gorgeous Saturday morning in Jackson, Madison County, and West Tennessee. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. Phone lines are open this morning, 731-891-6161. The Victory Honda text line is 731-410-7560. Ready and waiting for your calls, questions, and comments this morning for John Allen. Tricks of the Trade is presented each Saturday morning by West 10 Fence Company, Economy Siding and Windows, and Quality Outdoor Products. Now here's John. Morning, Jim. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Get that right in front of you there. You're, you're talking over the top of it there. Well, I am. Well, let's talk about that it's a little better. No, we got that same problem we always say. Try that one. How about that one? That's it. They I moved, sound like I hear that one. They moved them around on me again. Uh-oh. Well, <laughs> tell you what. I can't already see the microphone. This sun coming in the front window yeah, makes you kind of squint up there a little bit. A bit of a glare out there. Today. Yeah, yeah, nice day out today. Kind of cool. I like it that way because I don't like it getting too hot too soon. True. Yeah, I don't uh, like it getting too too hot, period. It, no, I, I'm already counting the days till <laughs> time to <laughs> put up fall. Christmas decorations. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, man, man. So how's your week been? Uh, well, so far, so good. We've been doing a... Awful lot of home improvements this week, just jumping around from site to site, and a lot of people getting out and uh, taking a look at the house and kind of seeing what all they got to do to it after that uh, winter we had, which was uh, kind of rough on outdoor surfaces. Right. And uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about that this morning and uh, kind of see what we can get into. I... Uh, tell people this time of the year it's always good to get out especially a bright sunny day like today and start poking around on the outside and kind of seeing what's good and what's not good and right. uh, if nothing else just kind of clean things up a little bit uh, a lot of painting going on a lot of uh, carpentry work and we'll kind of kind of get into some of that stuff this morning that sounds like a plan and speaking of, of things that are that are uh, out on the outside, I noticed the other day I uh, had a delivery on my front porch. That's the only thing that comes to my front porch is is the occasional rabbit and a package. <laughs> so I went out to get the package, and I, as I looked down, I noticed that uh, my uh, storm door on on the front, apparently I, I thought the thing was entirely metal and glass, but apparently it had some wood in it because I'm, I'm showing some rot down there at the bottom of my door your storm door storm door yeah yeah now question is huh. can you repair a door like that or do you just go get another one well you can repair anything now whether it's <laughs> practical or not right. i don't know but i you've got me stumped on wood door yeah. or, uh, the storm door i thought yours was a metal larson door I thought full view door, isn't it? Best I remember. Pretty much. I mean, it's got a little, you know, a little metal trim around it, about maybe two, three inches wide. But other than that, yeah. Huh. Yeah. So I, I was surprised too. But it, uh, uh, it, it appears to be rotten wood, you know, or water, water damaged wood. So plywood, probably the way it looks. Hmm. Well. Uh, uh, and then next time you're ever at Studio C, you can check it out. <laughs> well, take a look at that because uh, you know. Uh, it's kind of unusual to have a wooden storm door. Yeah, that's what I thought. Nowadays, too. anyway, yeah, it yeah. used to be that be wood. Well, it used to be all wooden screen, you know. Well, well, I don't know. We'll have to look at that. But since you brought it up, yeah, that will kind of lead us right into what we've been dealing with on a lot of people's houses this week, and that is rot. Yeah, there's a lot of rot everywhere right now. Really, it. Uh, you know, you, you don't think about it a lot, but rot, especially with a lot of these synthetic products they got out now that are not real wood, but then again, the wood itself is uh, pretty bad. It Anytime you get a place where you get a little water intrusion, it seems to kind of mess things up, but maybe it's just me and getting older, but it, it just didn't seem to be that bad years ago when... Wood was wood. Yeah, I yeah. mean, yeah. I've said before they don't they don't make wood like they used to. <laughs> they don't grow trees like they, they used don't to. grow trees like they used to. Got too many uh, goodies in the mix that uh, 
makes it grow up too fast and, and things deteriorate. But but here's kind of your scenario. You're, you're outside like a pretty day like today, and you start walking around the house, and you see something kind of looks funny. And it might be a little bit of peeling paint, or it could be a little, little hole that maybe you hadn't seen before. And you... You know how little boys are like me. You know, <laughs> if if you see something unusual, you got to pick at it. Yeah. You got you got you to you you stick yeah. your finger in it. Next thing you know, your finger's going in the hole, and you, you got a problem on your hands. Right. And uh, especially around doors and and windows, and then you get to looking a little further than that, you'll notice something looking funny up around your gutters up there. Maybe a. Uh, paint's rolling off of your face aboard and you wonder well that ain't supposed to be that way or uh maybe you look at your garage door and the frame around the garage door where it comes down and hits the concrete which it's not supposed to yeah. but everybody's does <laughs> and uh you see the paint kind of curling up right there and uh you get to poking in a probing or like I do, I'll get out a screwdriver and I'll kind of poke things, yeah. you know. And ice pick's good. For yeah, too, ice yeah. pick's good if you can find an ice pick. Now yeah. you just dated yourself <laughs> well, right boy, there. Boy, did I ever! How many people got an ice pick anymore? <laughs> but anyway, so anyway, uh, that, that's the way you kind of find out whether you got some problems or not. And then there's these people that had the houses built back in the '60s and the '70s and part of the '80s. Had that word Masonite, Masonite. on there, Ooh, boy. and boy, once it starts going, it just kind of goes downhill. You from can there. almost hear it sucking up water. It it is. <laughs> It'll do it. It, um, I, it it's probably one of the best worst problem products they ever put on the market. The best worst product. Yeah, okay. one of the best of the worst. One of the product. top worst product. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, got I, I don't okay. know. Yeah. I, it, 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 what uh, what is it? What what is Masonite made from? Is it it's like cardboard a, and glue. Okay, well, that's, that's what it looks like. And, and it's got a, a, a coating on the outside of it that repels the water. Right, for a little while. And it and it repels the water un, until you touch it. And when I say touch it, that is when you install it. And then you got to fasten it. And when you go to fasten it, then you got to, before you can fasten it, you got to cut it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And when you cut it and then when you fasten it, that's when things start going downhill. Because if you'll penetrate that masonite with a nail, that's a place for water to get in. Right. If you cut the end of that board, that's where water gets in. And uh, I, I tell that to people and they kind of look at me kind of funny and says, well, you, you got to cut it and you got to nail it to the wall. True. I said, well, you do. But uh, you got to do a little prep work then. First of all, you got to have the right kind of nail. And uh, that's when I have people kind of look at me kind of funny because most people think a nail is a nail if they even use nails anymore. Yeah, right. But there's, there's different kinds of nails for different scenarios around the house. And if, if this is on the outside, you need a galvanized nail, uh, a cement-coated nail. That won't rust because here's where you get your first problem with masonite. If you use an old box nail uh, or any kind of nail but a galvanized, it will start to rust. When it starts to rust, that's when the deterioration starts around the nail, allows the water to get in, and the rust aggravates the masonite, and then it wicks up the water, and it starts to pucker, and when it starts to pucker, it's all over. It's done. Yep. You can't yeah. unpucker a piece of masonite <laughs> <laughs> unless you cut it again. <laughs> well, yeah, you got to cut it off. And then when you cut it, you you need to paint those edges, and nobody does that. Yeah. But uh, some people will caulk them, and uh, that'll help for a little while until the caulk turns loose, and then it lets the water in. So if you got masonite on the outside of your house. If you see the first sign of puckering or uh, <laughs> swelling up a little bit or a nail that maybe you see just a little streak on the wood where the nail head might be rusting a little bit, right. you just need to stop right then and uh, pull that nail out 
and fill it full of caulk and put you another one in beside it. Okay. And uh, so you wouldn't go back in the same hole then. I wouldn't go back in the same hole and just go a little bit above it and just try your best to keep that uh, water from getting in where that nail was. And then you might have some trouble. So then you kind of venture on around the house and you start to looking around windows and doors. And then you find out those fine windows you put in years ago uh, had trim around the outside of them that was finger jointed. And uh, if you, you know what I mean by finger joint, yeah, it, they, that's where they take the trash off the floor <laughs> and, and <laughs> recycle it and, and kind of finger joint it all back together yeah. with a machine to cut down on waste. And yet they still charge you for a piece of wood yep. when all it was was the trash on the floor. The cutting that room floor. Yep. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, if water gets into those uh, finger joints, they get to swelling just like masonite. Next thing you know, you can just pull them apart because uh, they won't stick together anymore. So then you go to your doors, and you find the same thing, like where your jam sets down on the concrete or the floor, and then you got a blowing rain that's coming in, and uh, maybe you didn't paint real good or the paint's peeling, and when you don't have any paint, you've exposed your wood, and it'll get in, and then you got another problem. Next thing you know, you're rotting. So there's all kinds of little things like that that can uh, cause you to have to spend a little money or spend a little time repairing, but the key is is to catch it early. Because if you don't get it right away, you're going to have a whole lot bigger problem than what you had before. And uh, it's one of those things that just grows and grows and grows and gets worse and next thing you know you got a great big problem yeah it can get expensive in a hurry real expensive so you know keep that in mind when you're out there and uh, uh, working on things like that if if you're gonna use a nail on the outside of your house use a galvanized nail or a galvanized screw if you drove a nail in your siding uh, back at Christmas time to hang a wreath or something like that Mm -hmm. If you used a copper screw or a copper nail, leave it in there. But if you didn't, you better pull it out, fill the hole, and uh, otherwise you're going to have a spot that starts to rot right there. Gotcha. Okay. Maybe you didn't clean your gutters out, and your gutters are kind of drooping towards the front and pulling away from your face of board to where the water runs behind the gutter instead of in the gutter. Not good. That's a big problem. Uh, and will cause a lot of damage to your face of boards. And, you know, there are some siding people out here that if you, say, had a wooden face uh, and a masonite soffit and all that, and time comes you want to uh, uh, make up, update things and go to vinyl siding right. and put metal on your faces, they won't take your gutters down. They'll slide a piece of metal up behind your gutters up just enough to get under it and stop. So here you are thinking you're totally weatherized and not going to be maintenance free. And if water starts running in behind that trim, it starts rotting things out. And you don't even know it because it looks pretty on the outside. And uh, it it's bad on the inside. Wow. So you got all kinds of things like that going on. Yeah, yeah. Another thing, and I don't know whether this falls under rot or not. We're talking about exterior siding, uh, the old masonite siding. There was a real, real rush back uh, several years ago to do houses that looked like stucco back in the day, and I can't remember for the light EFI or something like that. EFIS. EFIS. Yeah. EFIS. Drive it. Yeah. Drive E-fus. it. Yeah. I, can, I drive it. I can remember. I, yeah. What about that stuff? I, I know it wicked water like nobody's business. Uh, also, if you got a drive it house, EFS house, <laughs> it's E I F S yeah. is what it is. Um, you know there there are some things that they get labels, and EFS is one of them. There's a lot of that out here. Yeah, and some of it, if it was put on right, is good stuff. I mean, it, it'll be all right. 
But the majority of it, which gives it the bad name, is it wasn't properly put on to begin with, and they didn't have the drainage system built into it. So it wicks water into it. And if it can't get out, it just stays there. Yeah. Takes up camp, and next thing you know, it's attracting ants and all kinds of little crawling varmints <laughs> and mold. And then you'll look in your house and see your walls starting to turn a little different color from the moisture being wicked in. And you really got to, we could do a whole show on, on EFAS and the good things and the bad things. But, you know, it, it kind of drives in house inspectors a little nutty. They, they, when they see it, they start yeah. saying things maybe they should, maybe they should. And they have a tendency to classify all of it as bad. It's really not. It's just the way it was put on. And uh, now your real problem with that stuff is trying to patch it. Really? And finding somebody that can patch it. Are it still, are it still being used some? I don't see it much on new construction anymore. Oh, it's, 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 it's commercial mainly. They use it all on the front of these storefronts. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, commercial. I was thinking more residential. but yeah. Well, they don't use it much on residential. You can't find anybody that will do it much because of the liability rent. well liability and just people don't do it because residential it's such a it's a, it's considered a small job if it's not several yeah. thousand feet right. and it's just not cost effective anymore because you don't want to have many penetrations yeah. when you have EFAS and uh, in houses you've got doors and windows and things that will cause problems so that's kind of the way it is. All right. You're listening to Tricks of the Trade on this Saturday morning. Phone line is open, 731-891-6161, or the Victory Honda text line at 410-7560. Love to hear from you this morning. We're going to take a quick commercial break, about 90 seconds or so. We'll be right back with John Allen. Hey, Dan. Hang on. Dan. Uh, hang on. Danny. Whoa. What? Let's sell this house and buy another. Say what? Seriously. This was your house when we got married. We need to find our house. Emily, mi casa es tu casa. Your bachelor pad is my bachelor pad? Okay, babe, look, if we're going to do this, we have to call the Greer Real Estate Group. Oh, I like them. They really care about their clients and they know what they're doing. Well, Brad's hobby is construction and repair. He can help us with what we need to get our house ready for the market. And I like Jennifer. She's kind, helpful, and handles all the paperwork. And Jonathan Greer, he's like a son to me. Speaking of children... Now wait a minute. We've got Freddie and Susie. The cats, Dan. <coughs> Dan, we have to have a pool. Oh, jeez. I don't feel like I'm 23 anymore. Lack of energy during the day, difficulty sleeping, reduced mental focus and memory, weight gain, including belly fat, reduced sexual desire, and performance. Studies show after the age of 30, most people produce 3 to 10% less hormones each year, and I felt it. I decided to do something about it, but I didn't want 152 shots of synthetic testosterone per year. What I discovered is changing my life. All testosterone replacement is not the same. Hormone pellets contain the same chemical structure as your body's natural hormones. They're placed under the skin and released bioidentical testosterone consistently to the bloodstream and last up to six months. Same thing with estrogen for females. I feel great. I don't want youth wasted on the young. I want it wasted on me. Feeling better for you can start with a simple phone call. Dr. Shannon Bone at Advanced Rehab and Medical. It's 731-503-4277. It's 503-4277. Call today. 731-503-4277. You'll be glad you did. Saturday morning, it is Tricks of the Trade here on 93.1, and we have a uh, call in the in the box. John, let's see what we've got here. Good morning and welcome to Tricks of the Trade. Okay, hello. Am I on? Yes, you are. <clears throat> okay, hey. So bear with me. I'm fighting a cold. So, hey, John, I have a two-fold question for you. Okay. You know that really bad storm that we had like three weeks ago, that horrible storm? Yeah. So this is the first question. Our house took a bad power surge. And so i kind of like to get your thoughts. We had like the kitchen. I was washing dishes, and the kitchen light blew right above my head. It blew out. It didn't blow. Luckily, it didn't blow. And then our air conditioner quit. 
the garage door quit, our router slash modem quit. And so all that stuff was weird, like the, the air conditioner. The guy came out three times, he replaced the board, and it blew again, and then he had to replace it again, and he finally got it. Do you have thoughts on these words? Because we called the fire department, and we thought we were struck by lightning. He said no. It was just, it would have been lightning struck away from the house and caused this big power surge. Um, because then I had an air purifier that worked fine for a week, and now it quit. And we think it might, you know, like, what, what are your thoughts on these weird things? Because he said it could kind of affect the whole house. <clears throat> well, uh, that is true. Uh, it affects a lot of the sensitive electronic equipment in, in your home, and air conditioners are one of them, garage door openers or other electronics, things of that nature. What you might want to do is call, are, are you in Jackson? We are, huh? Okay. You might want to call JA and ask them to send a technician out to check the grounding coming into your home, make sure you've got good connections. Uh, Then, if he finds nothing there, you might want to get an electrician to come out and check your panel uh, again and check for grounding issues to make sure that your voltage coming in and being distributed is consistent and that you don't have any problems there. We've had an awful lot of calls at our office on this same situation that you are are talking about, and I have found a lot of problems with um, receptacles and the grounds on those that have come loose, connections that are... Uh, that were disturbed by the power surge that are arcing and causing things to flicker. Um, It wouldn't be a bad idea to just have some diagnostics done by an old veteran electrician that understands circuitry in your home. Well, thank you for saying that. The funny thing is I actually, someone did suggest JEA, so I called them about a week and a half ago, and they did check what you said. But then they told me when I asked about the outlets, he said if things that are plugged into my outlets are working fine now, it should be fine. Is that, because I've had, like you said, weird things. A, a flash, a charging flashlight flickered and like my razor quit. It's really what electric razor quit. But oh. he was telling me if things that are plugged in now are working okay, it should be okay. Is that not correct? Well, I'm going to disagree with him a little bit because I can tell you, I'm going to tell you three instances Mm. this week where I went out on service calls, I'm an electrician, and and looked at exactly what you were talking about. And on every one of those situations, I found, well, on one of them, it was where two wires were put on a single lug which you're not supposed to have but it was it had been going on for so long that it burned the terminal on the switch that also supplied power to the outlets and to the tv another situation i found is where you had uh residential receptacles where the wires plugged into the back of them and when you put a meter in them they checked fine but when you put plugged something in and made a load on them, it dropped everything down to about 60 volts where you're supposed to be getting 120, 125. And it's because of a bad connection in there. Uh, You've got other situations where junctions that uh, maybe in one particular, instead of people using wire nuts on those junctions, they used rubber tape and this was a house that was like 60, 70 years old. And heat had built up from where they had been, had a heater plugged in for many, many months. And it overheated the junction and caused that to become loose and caused it to arc. So just because it reads right with a tester doesn't mean you don't still have a problem. So you got to go a little, got to go a little, ma'am. Well, an electrician can tell that, like, if there's certain outlets that are funky versus other ones, an electrician can tell that by doing something. Yeah, you have to pull You have to pull the outlets out and check the connections uh, in the wall. 
You can't just look at it and tell it. Uh, but okay. if there, what what would be very helpful uh, would be for you to be able to identify what goes out or what flickers and where those items are plugged in. It gives it gives an electrician a starting point to do his diagnostics, and uh, you you would be surprised at what might be pulled up and you'll be able to take care of it's not a hard thing to do but uh you got to do a little investigation on getting in okay well thank you for that john um the second part of that question is about a week about a week and a half ago my son saw a line on the ceiling um so you know where this is going because it was such a severe storm and so we go up in the attic and there's like appears to be a water leak from that vent that goes, the vent that goes, you know, those, it's the vent that goes from the HVAC system up, up through the roof. You know the vent that goes into the boot, you know what I'm talking about, everybody in Jackson has them. And our house is only five years old. Uh -huh. But we have, like, a leak. And at first, we didn't know if it was coming from the HVAC system. It's like it's coming from the roof or the pipe, and it drips down where that elbow in the pipe is. Right. So I had a guy come out, and you know what he did? He went on the roof, and he simply... He still had combed the nail. I have exposed nails up there. He said it wasn't installed properly, so he still combed the nails. Well, it's still basically leaking. Can you have a, my husband took a picture and sent to a contractor brother friend. Can you have a leak where the vent goes into the boot? Like, could it, because it never was silicone before. Is that what you would recommend? Because we think it's coming from the vent versus the HVAC pipe, by the way, kind of by the way the water runs down there. Right. You uh, very could, could very well have just a leak around your boot, which a little silicone will probably take care of that. Uh, make sure that any roofing that is around that flashing that's been secured by nails, that those also are uh, siliconed and sealed, and that the shingles that lap down on that uh, are sealed down to where water can't blow up under it. We've had a lot of problems with wind-driven rain the last few months with some of these hard yeah. rainstorms, and it will actually blow up under the shingle, and uh, it causes it causes a problem. He said the shingler looked fine. He saw it come the nail. They didn't saw it come the boot. I mean, but yeah, I think he has to come back out there. But yeah, I'm guessing that's what it was. That start. And how do you? How can you tell as a contractor you because you're so good at what you do? How do you? How can you for sure tell it's that versus the pipe because it's the same exact spot. Where that elbow in the pipe, you know, it, it's leaking onto the, I guess you'd say the bottom of the attic floor. You know, that's kind of where it's dripping. So if, it's so if it's coming funny. through there, there's, there's a couple of other things you could have going on wrong. Uh, you could have a little condensation uh, building up in the pipe. Uh, sounds yeah. like you've got a double yeah. wall pipe. You may have a leak in the cap that's causing it to run down. Um, you may have a vent that hasn't been put in properly and... Uh, it's, it's literally sweating on the inside of the pipe, causing water to drip. Uh, it's kind of like a duck pipe under your house. If, it, if it's not put in properly, it will start to uh, condensate and drip repeatedly. Of course, in your case, if it was going on while it was raining, it's pretty well rain-related. But you might want to check the cap on that vent pipe. Okay. Hopefully my husband's listening. I wanted to put him on, but he wanted me to go ahead and explain. It's very complicated. Yeah. <laughs> well, if just, you can't get it figured it, out, give like me a, a call. Little, you know. Okay. Thanks, John. Okay. Appreciate it. Thanks for calling in this morning. That's how easy it is. 731-891-6161 is the number to call. Put you right in the phone box. You can talk to John directly. Now, we need to talk. We were talking about rotted windows a moment ago and, yeah. and, and broken windows and bad siding and all that stuff. We, right here, have a remedy for that. You do? Yes, we do. It's we called do. Economy Siding and Windows. That's a very good remedy. Yeah. And uh, that's a phone number I call regularly. As a matter of fact, called in yesterday. And uh, if you've got some things uh, that just don't look right on the outside and you're tired of caulking and painting and... Uh, Fixing wood, what you need to do is give Economy Siding a call and let Stormy come out and take a look at it because he can weatherproof, uh, well, that's not the right word, but yeah. maintenance-free. 
There you go. There that, you go. that will take care of problems on your outside, and you'll be able to not have to worry about caulking anymore or painting anymore. You may have to hose it off every now and then just to get the dirt off of it. Well, it'll give you something to do. But that'll give you a little something to do. <laughs> need to get a little exercise out there. But, uh, you know, I would definitely give Stormy a call if you've got a problem and want to update your windows, put in some nice replacement windows, uh, you know, get some more trim around your door, uh, redo your gutters if they're drooping a little bit where they shouldn't. Even put a little gutter guard on every now and then and uh, uh, metal faces, put that on, cover that wood so you don't ever have to paint that anymore. Give them a call. They, they, they're the best around here. I use them myself, and uh, I'm glad they're a sponsor of the show. Absolutely. It's easy to get a hold of them, 731-422-3828, or check them online at economysighting.com. Calm. Call them today if you have such a problem. We're going to take a quick uh, commercial break here, John. We'll be right back with Tricks of the Trade. All right. During these difficult times, we understand how important it is to stay healthy and safe. With so many of us confined to our homes and not being able to work, we feel the financial burden more than ever. Many folks lost their jobs and businesses. Others were furloughed and some are working from home at reduced pay. Keeping up with your bills is not easy under these circumstances. If you have credit card debt and cannot keep up with your monthly payments, we at Debt Fix Pros are here to help. Give us a call to see how we can reduce your interest rates and lower your monthly payments. Protect your credit and let us help you find a solution that fits your needs. We, your friends at Debt Fix Pros, are here to help. Let us take care of your credit card debt so you can focus on what is really important. Call for a free phone consultation at 1-800-683-9577. 1-800-683-9577. Representatives are standing by to assist you. 1-800-683-9577. one 800 9577. This is WTJS, Alamo, Jackson, News Talk, West Tennessee. Sakura set the standard in West Tennessee for Japanese sushi rolls and hibachi grill dishes. By popular demand, Sakura added a Chinese menu. For starters, egg drop and hot and sour soup. Entrees include chicken broccoli, sweet and sour chicken, Mongolian beef, and lo mein with your choice of meat. Our Chinese lunch menu starts at just $7.95. Sakura also delivers to your home or business, or you can call ahead for pickup at 664-2878. Sakura's dining area now open and serving at 50% capacity. Sakura yeah, on Carriage House Drive. Dude, you couldn't taste it. With John Allen, Tricks of the Trade, 731 891 6161. The phone line, 731 410 7560. That'll put you into the Victory Honda text line. We'll be jumping right on either one. We need to talk to you this morning. Here's John. Yeah, you know, uh, we talked about we got a new sponsor. Yes, we do. And and why don't we just go ahead and talk about him because we got a little story about about that uh got a call the other day from mr brad and says we got another sponsor for the show and quality outdoor products quality outdoor products and uh said john you know where that is i said no (laughs) and uh he sits up in three-way and uh i said well i need to go pay that guy a visit so i went up there this week not really knowing what i was getting into but I was I was pleasantly surprised. I mean, I'm going to be one of his customers. There you go. They they do everything and they do it right there. They mainly deal with uh, outdoor equi- I mean, uh, outdoor buildings. Yep. And roofing. Exactly. And they got all the products that go with it. But the thing that intrigued me the most about them is they make it all right there. Now anybody can go out to the store and buy a piece of metal roofing. But they can't make it. Yeah. And uh, they make everything right there. All the framing for all your outdoor uh, buildings, they bend it, weld it. They do it all right there and can sell you a building completely fabricated. And they can help arrange to have somebody come out and put it up for you. And they'll do it from start to finish. Yep. And uh, I'm, I'm very proud to have them uh, on our sponsor list here and uh, highly recommend anyone to go out there. I have saw firsthand their products, watch the guys in the shop in action, and uh, they'll cut it and make it and bend it and 
got some real sophisticated machines that had all kinds of little wheels and gadgets and where they could take a just a little old piece of metal and stick it in one end and it comes out the other looking like what they want it to and and little computer doohickeys and thingamajigs that they can punch in and make it bend it one way and bend it another and then they pick it up and another little fellow take it over here and He'll slap that uh, helmet down and uh, start the welding. Yep. And uh, it it was just kind of neat watching how all that stuff comes together so you were to duly, make a beautiful building. You were duly impressed, huh? I was. I mean, it was uh, nice to see it happen. You know, it, uh, they were, as you say, making the sausage out there. Absolutely. It uh, was. Uh, you know what amazes me is you can go out there and, and, and tell them what you want and get your business done and, and give them all the specs and everything. And in a lot of cases, they can have that all done and ready for you to pick up that day. Well, that's the other thing. You can call an order in at noon and probably get your medal that afternoon. That's amazing. That is amazing. But they got another little trick. And and this is like, I looked at it and my jaw dropped, but they got a website. And uh, so you wanted to, you were just shopping around, Jim, you know. You know, you know nowadays, you know, you call a, a company and you got to send them submittals and you got to, Tell them what size you want and what features you want, and then you may have to wait two or three weeks for them to get back with you and tell you what it's going to cost, and then it may not still be right, and you have to go in there and change a bunch of other stuff, and every time you change anything, it affects the price. Sure. They got a website on there to where you can build your own building, and he showed it to me. You, you you build your building, you put your size in and how tall you want it to be, and you actually put your doors and windows wow. where they go and what kind of trim, what kind of overhang, even what kind of color, what yeah. color you want it to be. You punch it all in, and you'll actually build it right there on the screen. And then punch a button, and it tells you what it cost that quick. That's amazing. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that later on yeah. but let's go back and catch a phone call right now yeah let's do let's remind everybody you can get a hold of quality quality outdoor products up at three-way 888-485-5372 and you're right john we are we're pleased to have them as part of the part of the program that's right all right got a call here john all right good morning and welcome to tricks of the trade good morning how are you today i'm good you know we keep talking about materials going up Yesterday, I went and bought some uh, two-inch drain pipe, about 80 feet, $186 for that 80 feet of pipe. Whoa. <laughs> that was all, no, no fittings, just pipe, $186 for 80 feet. Yep. How, how are people building houses today? They're not. <laughs> oh, how does the... Cons- it, That's what I figured. It, everything right now, I mean... You, you talk about plumbing material, you talk about electrical products, you talk about lumber, building material, oh. shingles. Um, it, it's through the roof. And I don't see any sign of it coming down. Um, supply is just limited on everything, and that's what's driving the price. And uh, it's just that same old supply and demand economics formula. It's, it's causing everything to just go out of sight. And... And I don't know what we're going to do right now because it's rising so rapidly. Uh, I, I'm thinking we're going to have a crash. Well, you know. People can't build. There, there's no inventory out there. I know gasoline come down a little. Yeah, it, it did. What's that? It is creeping back up a little bit. So, uh, I, I don't know. I, I almost almost bought me a hat the other day. It was one of those red hats that Trump used to have. Uh-huh. You know, he used to have one that said, Make America yeah. Great Again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this one said, Make Plywood Cheap yeah. Again. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I feel your pain, hey, brother. Uh, one more question. Sure. One more question. On the south side of town, including Chester County, where can a person buy... A trench and shovel. You know what I'm talking about. I do. Trench and shovel. Like a sharpshooter. Where can you find one? Well, I think yeah, you... Yeah, kind of. Uh, it's angled. 
I think long handle like a shovel, but it's angled. Uh, let me think. Let me think. I'm gonna tell you. Have you been to Simmons Lumber Company? Yes. I mean, they didn't have one. No. Hmm. Well, that's where I bought my last one. Of course, that's been about eight, ten years ago, and people don't have the inventory they used to have. All I know to do right now right. to tell you is to go online. You may have to order one of those in. Um, and I hope you're planning on using it you yourself. Sell yours? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you I might do yours? that. You might, I might do that. Um, I'm gonna, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to see if I can find you a trench and shovel. And uh, you just stay tuned for next week, and I'll let you know where I might can find one. You want a six or eight foot handle I on it? Today. Oh, not today. <laughs> uh, can't help you with that know, today. I didn't know they had eight foot. Yeah, they do. They make a six oh, and eight six foot. foot. They make a four, six, and an I'm eight. I'm going to go with an eight. All right. I'll, uh, let me see what I can find out. And I will, uh, next time you come on the air, I, I can't help you today, but I'll, I'll let you know where we can find one. Now, um, Williams Equipment can might get you one, but I don't know if they are open today or not. But through the week they are out here on, no, on they're Bell closed Highway. on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, they're closed on Saturday. Yeah. I wish I could help you on that, but right now I'm just kind of drawing a blank. That's fine. That's fine. Well, right. I appreciate it. I'll hang up and let somebody else talk. All right. Sounds good. I'll find out that I'll find that shovel for you. Right. Appreciate right. the phone calls this morning. Let's get this one going and go to this one right here. Give me a second. Okay, John. All right. Good morning and welcome to Tricks of the Trade. Hey, good morning. This is John also. All right. <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, uh, my wife called earlier. I just wanted a, a quick follow-up on that surge that we had. Uh-huh. Um, on our kitchen sink, it's got that dual switch for the uh, trash compact or not trash compact, the disposal, uh-huh. and then the light above the sink. Mm-hmm. Well, the disposal still works fine, but the, the, uh, the light went out. So I haven't tried to replace that yeah but is there a chance that it could mess up one half of that switch and not the other half you probably may not be in the switch is your light above the sink fluorescent or led or is it above well, I, the fluorescent I, I was going to replace the fluorescent and put an led in there well what you might want to do is just take the cover off of your fluorescent up there to expose the electric wires and coming into the fixture, you will find a black and a white wire. If you can get you a tester and see if you have voltage coming to that point, uh, you should read 120, 125 volts on, between the black and the white wire. If you have that, then you know your switch is fine, and it's just the problems in the light fixture. However... If you don't have the voltage coming up to it, chances are it's just the switch. And changing out a single pole switch would be very easy to do. It'll just be two wires. You can't get them backwards, and and you can change that out. Okay. And just to follow up on the, the roof leak thing, there were droplets on the outside of the PVC pipe coming down from the vent. Uh-huh. So I think that it was, like you were saying, the leaks coming from uh, the... Yeah, give that a shot. The if you're running into trouble, just give me a call and uh, I'll help you check it out. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you. Right, thanks for Good calling. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Goodbye. Hey, John, we may have a remedy for our uh, trenching shovel. I have a text. It says, tell the caller he can have mine. Okay. And he gave uh, a phone number, so I assume he's okay with me giving this phone number out. We'll give it out. 234-2219. And ask for Rich. Well, there you go. So, caller, there's your uh, there's your trenching shovel. Maybe. Maybe so. Thank you, Rich. We appreciate you. Right. Appreciate you doing that. And another text coming in on the uh, Victory Honda text line. It says, <clears throat> I have to I have to get my poetry voice on here. The ghost poet is Uh-oh. back. Uh-oh. The poet listens to John Allen. 
each and every Saturday morning. Just to get an accident update, we can all use a safety warning. (laughs) 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 Have you hurt yourself lately? (laughs) Yeah, I've got a pretty good roll going right now. I think I've gone a week or so with with no incidents. No blood or anything. Yeah. So, you know, and uh, it's always tomorrow, maybe today. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Lord have mercy. Uh, This is the Tricks of the Trade with John Allen, and uh, we're glad to have everyone along with us. 891-6161 is the uh, call-in line. It's being used quite often today. Victor Honda text line in service also at 4107560. We're going to stop right here and take our last commercial break of the morning. We'll come back and wrap it up. If you have questions or comments, now would be the time to dial them in there. We'll be right back. Every business is unique and driven to improve results. What's right for one might not be right for you. It all depends on your business and your goals. Trying to grow revenue, focused on cutting costs, or simply need a better way to get work done? XMC, your Xerox authorized sales agent, can help. We offer exceptional Xerox products and are proud to provide cost-effective office equipment and electronic document management. Visit XMCINC.com and allow XMC to help boost productivity, enhance collaboration, and reduce costs at your office. Now that we're home more than ever, we need to feel safe. Call it a sign of the times or the world we now live in. What do you want to keep safe? The people in your life? What do you want to protect? Your possessions? The things that belong to you? The things that you've worked hard for? Wouldn't it be nice to have tested, trusted 24-7 protection? Peace of mind, real protection that's always there for you and your whole family? Well, now you can with one of our state-of-the-art home security systems. Everyone thinks their home is safe until the unexpected happens. Start protecting your home and loved ones today with the affordable next generation in home security. To keep your family and property safe, call 1-800-784-1192. Representatives are standing by to assist you. That's 1-800-784-1192. 1-800-784-1192. This is WTJS, Alamo, Jackson, News Talk, West Tennessee. Now that we're home more than ever, we need to feel safe. Call it a sign of the times or the world we now live in. What do you want to keep safe? The people in your life? What do you want to protect? Your possessions? The things that belong to you? The things that you've worked hard for? Wouldn't it be nice to have tested, trusted 24-7 protection? Peace of mind, real protection that's always there for you and your whole family? Well, now you can with one of our state-of-the-art home security systems. Everyone thinks their home is safe until the unexpected happens. Start protecting your home and loved ones today with the affordable next generation in home security. To keep your family and property safe, call 1-800-784-1192. Representatives are standing by to assist you. That's 1-800-784-1192. 1-800-784-1192. Here at Jackson Off-Road, we are a complete automotive service center that does work on area business fleets, servicing and repairing both diesel and gas engines. Our experienced technicians and advanced technology will upgrade your company's vehicle's performance, saving you significant dollars. Graham Snack Food said, Jackson Off-Road keeps our fleet of vehicles on the road in a timely manner, regardless of what repairs are required or what time of the day or night we call for service or repair. Jackson Off-Road, online and on the 45 Bypass. My name is Jeremy Tate. I'm the director of bands at Gibson County High School in Dyer, Tennessee. I'm one of five band directors that make up the Gibson County Mass Band that will be participating in the 2022 Tournament of Roses Parade in Pasadena, California. This trip simply would not be possible without you. We need your help! Visit roses2022.com to make your donation today! And we are back on Tricks of the Trade on a gorgeous Saturday morning in West Tennessee. John Allen, uh, your host, and uh, the phone lines are 731-891-6161 or the text line at 731-410-7560. And we've talked about two of our, our title sponsors. we got to one more that we need to, to talk about a little bit. Yeah, I was, I was riding the countryside this week and out in the rural area and made me kind of think of 
our sponsor, you yeah. know, West End Fence Company. There's a couple of little rowdy cows I saw out in the north end of the county, <laughs> and and they were up next to the fence. And you, you ever watched a cow scratch his back? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, that's what this one was doing. And I just wondered if West End Fence Company put this fence up because there was this old heifer <laughs> leaning up against the fence, <laughs> scratching his back on leaning up against the post. Yeah. And I noticed the post wasn't moving. It wasn't wobbling. It was holding up the weight of that heifer. Yep. And uh, I just wondered if that might have been the one that one they had put up. It was a real nice place out uh, off the Campbell extended area out there. But, I mean, they can build a fence that will hold your heifer up. Now, that's that's <laughs> just all I'm telling you. There's enough said right there. That's true. He's talking cows here, not yeah. not other people you live with. Uh, that, that's right. But I, I've got to... <laughs> Yeah, we 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 deal with those too, you know. <laughs> it's not nice to talk about your in laws like that, but but uh, yeah, you know it. Uh, they build all kinds of fences, and uh, they put in gates, and you know you got a wrought iron fence you want to put up, make it real nice around the front of your house, and then you may want to change to a chain link fence, and and then if you want to keep your uh, in laws out, you might even want a barbed wire fence, you know, uh, and and. Uh, with a but, little transformer but, on one end of That's <laughs> right. I would give them a little buzz when they, they uh, lean up against it. But, no, they're, they're a great company, great people. Uh, all the people know exactly what to do. They get in. They get out. They clean up the mess. They're insured. They're local. And if you have a problem, you know where to find them. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, give West End Fence Company a call. They're out here on Hollywood Drive. And uh, just tell them that you need to keep your heifer in, and I told you to call. So there you go. There you go. It's that easy. 21 and 58 Hollywood Drive to be exact, 731-668-5959, or contact Ricky in the sales department at rpennington1. That's number one, rpennington1 at yahoo.com. Gets you right in there at West 10 Fence Company, one of our three great sponsors. Speaking of heifers. Yes. I, I got a silly grin on my face. About a month ago, I was flipping through some of these magazines you see on the rack at Kroger's as you go in to check out. One of them was a little home improvement, oh boy. and it was one that had odd tips in it. <laughs> and I looked at one, I'm going to kind of grin because somebody done stole my tip. Oh, no. And uh, I didn't think anybody knew about this but me. But apparently somebody else did, or they were listening to the show, and they sent it into this magazine got got 100 bucks for it. Whoa. And that is if your weather vane ever plays out. Uh-huh. Nobody wants a new weather vane on the house because that makes you look a little uppity. <laughs> you want to make it look old and antique Yeah. And you know how to make your weather vane look old? You bury it for two weeks in cow manure. Okay. Yeah, you do. <laughs> And, and all the little chemicals and additives and acids in the manure uh-huh. kind of put a patina on your metal. And, and an odor. And, <laughs> and you can hose it off. But that was a tip that somebody got paid for. And that was my tip because I got that from my grandpa years ago. Well, that, that makes sense. That's yeah. right. When his rooster wouldn't spin on top of the barn, yep. we got another one, and it was shiny. And he didn't like that. So he, he threw it on the ground. I thought he was mad. He threw it on the ground and got a shovel and threw poop on top of it. Yeah. What are you doing that for? He says, I'm going to make it look a little older than it is. And then the next weekend I went up there. He went up there and we uncovered the poop and hung the weather vane up. And it was had a beautiful patina hue yes, about it. it. Yes, it did. <laughs> Well, you know, the key to that is remembering where you, which poop pile you put it under. <laughs> that's, that's right, because there was a lot of them out there. Yeah, that, uh, they'll get that way on, on your basic farm. We've got about seven, six and a half minutes left in the show. What to, what else is on your mind today? Well, I, I got two calls this week, same problem, and it was about pops and squeaks and things going on in the house that people hadn't heard before. And it was actually a new home, but it was the first season they had been in it. They moved in in the fall. And they said, every time my toilet flushes in one end of the house, I hear this popping and banging going on under the house. 
And then this other one was every time I turn my hot water heater, it comes on. My pipes get to popping. It's just like somebody is, is shooting a gun really? under the house. Wasn't in the best of neighborhoods, so I said, you sure it's not? <laughs> but, but anyway, <laughs> but the deal was it was the same problem. And, and you might experience this in your home if it's a relatively new home. You know, when uh, plumbers are boring holes to run their pipes through them, sometimes it's kind of a snug fit. And with all this new plastic pipe or poly pipe or PEX pipe yeah. that they have out now, that piping, when you go to strap it down, unless you get it strapped down correctly and allow for it to expand or contract, it'll get to moving around. And it rubs against the wood. And you wouldn't think you'd do this, but it rubs against the wood and it makes squealing noises, popping noises, or as the pipes are expanding and contracting. So your strapping of those pipes are extremely important. Sometimes you got too many straps. Sometimes you don't have enough straps. And if you got things that are popping and banging, you might even have some water lines that are just dancing around down there moving. Uh, and it's called air hammering. That's yeah. that's pretty pretty common problem. But you can take your Miracle Cure of the South, WD-40, and put that little red nozzle straw on it and go under there and lube where that pipe goes through that strap or where that pipe goes up through a piece of wood where maybe a hole is not quite big enough and it's just kind of rubbing yeah. on the side of your pipe. You can squirt that with WD-40 and kind of lube that joint up a little bit and it'll solve your problem as well. So it's kind of a mystery things for things that go popping and creaking in the night. Yep. And it's a lot of times it's just your water lines. Air hammering. Uh, you, you, we, you've talked about that before and how to, how to get the air out of your line. If you've had the water turned off or, or something like that. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, go over that real quickly again, especially if you're in a, in a one and a half or two story house. You got to do something on both levels, right? Yeah, go go to the lowest faucet in the house and turn it wide open. A lot of times that will be the uh, outside faucet, right? And then go to the highest faucet in the house, and that's probably a shower upstairs if it's a two story or a three story house, right? And when you get them wide open, just let them run for a minute or two. And then go to the lowest faucet and turn it off first. And then go to the highest faucet and turn it off last. And what that does is that purges a lot of the air, line, the air out of the lines. You get air in your lines for various reasons, but a lot of times when you're doing plumbing repair, changing out a water heater, things of that nature, uh, you'll get air in the lines and you got to purge things. Another thing you got to do when you do that is when uh, you get a lot of sediment in your lines and and people will say maybe after you put a water heater in said why is it that i got plenty of water in my bathtub but i just got a trickle coming out of the kitchen sink now and that's because some of the things that were inside of those pipes have shifted and flowed down and they got caught in your aerator right and uh, you have to unscrew those and blow them out and put them back in and uh it's just kind of a common little problem you have around the house. Yep. And uh, careful, careful look in the mirror when you do that, though. Because a lot of times if you take those aerators out, especially if there's a little black rubber ring behind it, uh -huh. and you put it up to your mouth and you blow through it the opposite way, <laughs> look in the mirror because you may have a big old black circle <laughs> around your lips. <laughs> I've been laughed at a time or two over that. And... Uh, well, but you see, you could fix it, though, because you keep lipstick in your truck. <laughs> That's right. I covered up with my lipstick. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, man. that's another story. That's yeah, really that's, that's for another day and another crowd, I'm afraid. Yeah. Uh, another little tip I'm going to pass on to you. Talking about right on the outside. Yeah. A lot of people have columns on the front of their house. And the, one of the first things to go on a house is the, the base of your column will start to rot. 
And normally you don't know it until it's too late because you can just stick your finger through, through it, the yeah. base. Oh, yeah. So if you go to put your new one up, and it's actually a wood base that you're putting on, take your skill saw on the bottom of that base that sits down on the concrete and cut what's called a kerf mark on that base. That's where it is you take your saw and, and drop the blade down to where it's about a quarter to three-eighths, and uh, you'll score the bottom of that uh, plate on your column. Just make a plus sign on it from one side to the other, and that allows water not only to get out of it, uh, but it also gives it to breathe if it, if it gets in there. So cutting those kerf marks are real good to preserve the life of those columns. And you're playing the music, I which am. means I guess it's about time for me to shut up and get busy. I got things to do around the house today. I'm going to be putting on outdoor countertops today. There you go, man. Yeah, and that'll we, be we, fun. It's, we're going to take pictures of this. It's kind of, kind of kind, I'm should, excited I'm about a, it. Yeah, I want to see that myself. Yeah. yeah. I certainly do. One last text. It says, I've been wondering how to make my weather vane look old. There you go. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> see you next week on Texas right. the Truck.